Hi, my name's Paul, and I want to point out that we're at a time of great anxiety. There's a lot of anxiety around health, and rightly so. But if I'm reading my own kind of emotional logbook, I'm noticing a rising anxiety around uh, the financial state of our nation. I, for many years, lectured at UCT in the College of Accounting, and I qualified as a chartered accountant, and I sit here today, past a community of people who are taking the right action as far as social distancing is concerned, but I don't have line of sight around what the right action would be um, economically and financially during this time. And that can be a source of great anxiety, especially if we're not talking about it, and I'm, I'm generally not reading much about it. And it's an area of our lives that we don't talk a lot about. Um, it can be a great source of kind of a joy or sadness or anxiety in our lives. And I'd suggest that right now, our financial state of affairs is a, is a big source of anxiety. Jesus Christ, interestingly, spoke about money a lot, precisely because he knew, I think, that this would be a major area of anxiety and a major area of focus for our lives. And Jesus Christ is a person I'm trying to follow and I'm trying to apprentice my life on. And he didn't just speak about money, he also spoke about the fact that we shouldn't be anxious, that, that there's something in following him that leads to a life, not necessarily of getting everything we want or prosperity, but there's a life that we can anticipate of, um, of uh, lacking anxiety. And so I wanna put these two things together, the fact that there's a massive conversation not happening and the fact that Jesus Christ did speak about money and he also spoke about us not needing to be anxious. And I wanna try and bring that together in this video. And um, really what I wanna first off say to everyone is that whilst I'm hearing stories of uh, mass cancellations of certain industries having to take pay cuts, I'm, I'm internationally reading about uh, Italian banks giving four month holidays on, on bond repayments. I mean, imagine how good that would be. I've heard about the French government kind of saying, don't have to pay for gas, don't have to pay for rates, don't have to pay for electricity. Uh, Wow, that would be incredible. Um, the, the state is busy putting together a potential bill where they send cash to their citizens, recognizing that the trickle down through other agencies might take too long and, and maybe just a check given to everyone would help the most. I don't know how much of that is gonna filter through uh, globally, but when I see powerhouse nations seeing the economic impact and taking those radical steps, I acknowledge that there's something big going on here. And in South Africa, we sit with a different problem. We sit with a, a piggy bank that isn't full from a government point of view. And so right now, we need to be thinking and having this conversation around what good wisdom for our finances involves. I don't know globally how it's going to work out, but I think there are some steps we can take as individuals, and we should be talking about these steps. So maybe that's my first message to all of us, is that right now is a moment uh, where personal responsibility for our finances needs to kick in. I know there's lots else grabbing our attention. I know the school holidays are soon gonna start. I know there are lots of fires to put out in, in different environments where we're working in different parts of the city. I know the call to serve our city is one that we take very seriously. But if we're gonna last for the long haul here, we do need to pay attention to our personal finances. It can be an area which we let drift in the background, but I would encourage you, if you do have a financial advisor, to make an appointment with them. Connect electronically somehow. If you haven't got on top of your budgets and your, and your financial standing, you need to be doing this as a priority. Uh, I want to be quite strong in this, that you really have no excuse not to sit down soon and almost have a state of the, state of the nation address with yourself where you sit down and see where you are financially. If this isn't an area of expertise, there are many resources and we hope to be making some available to you to help you in this particular area. But please, if this is something you've outsourced or haven't given much attention to, the, the situation is such that it now needs to climb to the, to the top of your list. The second thing I would say is that then you need to take action. You know, the, these things can often just be like, okay, I've kind of got a bit of an, and, and you just sit. And I, I would really strongly recommend that in the short term, we take actions to 
curb spending to draw up that list of what are the things I, I want versus what are the things I need. Some of the language that's crept in at the moment is, you know, what's essential and what's non-essential in trying to kind of decide how to how to order things. And I would suggest the same in our financial state. This um, is a time where we need to be looking at what are those essential spends and what are those non-essentials. And Every family has got different environments and different contexts, and so I can't necessarily speak into the specifics of that, but I would say to everyone that there does need to be a conversation that happens, especially if there's more than one person financially contributing in a household and there are more than one decision makers. If you are a family, obviously it's different if, you, if you're single, but still there need to be these conversations that as tough as they are in trying to decide what's essential and what's non-essential. Um, what... What we uh, offer as a community to each other is an opportunity to get some uh, perspective from one another. So that would be a third thing I'd encourage. Take responsibility, have the conversation around actions that need to happen, the essentials, non-essentials, and then thirdly, get some perspective from others in your life. I'm not saying share with everyone, it's probably not wise, but think of a few people that you can move towards um, and to bounce ideas off. There's an opportunity uh, in this season for us to step up, those of us that have an, uh, a wisdom in this area, we have a track record in this area, to provide some perspective to other people. I would caution against um, getting unwise in how we help each other. Some things I've seen in the past is people saying, you must do this, you must do that, um, but maybe um, not fully understanding the person's uh, position and that person also not fully disclosing where they're at and so I'd rather use the language of getting perspective rather than than being um, getting permission from someone. I would also suggest that sometimes we uh, can be too quick to help each other financially without the wisdom of keeping it anonymous uh, because that person then can feel uh, indebted to you or, or uh, it just can ruin relationships and so as we move towards each other my, my encouragement would be to get perspective from one another. And if there is something of a partnership going forward or an investment to just get the perspective of maybe a leader of a life group or a leader in, in community to help us uh, navigate what that would look like. I, um, I do think that this area of our lives can be one where we don't talk about it and we allow anxieties to kind of fester in the kind of shadows of our mind. And so I know this, that this step is hard, a lot of us, don't take it, but really, um, as much as we're talking around wisdom for our health, we should be talking around wisdom for our financial health and we should be reaching out to each other during this time. This has a massive impact, obviously, on our nation. We don't want to be uh, fearful, and uh, but, but at the same time, we want to face facts. And one of the facts I've just seen as I've looked at our nation is that there are a lot of people hoarding at the moment. There are a lot of people going out of their way to take care of themselves. And I don't wanna um, spend my time now talking about uh, their motives and uh, what, I, what, I, what I wanna point out is that we live in a country where we've got th those that are able to hoard and then we've got those who are living hand to mouth. Uh, even if they had the option to find full shelves, they wouldn't have the resources to, to stock up. And as a nation, we need to work out how we hold these two together and how we move towards each other with the love of Christ. Um, we've got a blog post that's going to be put up soon around this topic, and we've got an opportunity to do things differently as a community. As I started out here, I said, I think I've seen a lot of conversations around health, but I haven't seen as many conversations around our financial well-being, and maybe this is just a video to start us along these lines. If you are someone who's particularly gifted in this area and maybe by the grace of God, you're in a particular line of business that is booming at the moment. I know there's some obvious examples where people are, are you know, using new services um, from a technology point of view and stocking up on things. And 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 there's a there's an opportunity if you're a hand sanitizer business right now to really uh, overflow in generosity towards each other. And so I'd encourage each and every one of us during the season to look at what God's given us and to look at how we can start that conversation and move towards each other. We. As South Africans have come through a lot together. We have uh, hosted World Cups. We've won World Cups. We've uh, dealt with load shedding. We've dealt with day zero here in Cape Town. And there's another opportunity now to think through what financially this crisis is going to mean for us. To think for ourselves, and that's a big responsibility, 
to think through what's our essentials and non-essentials and then to move towards each other in community and start to think about what not just the next few weeks but the next few months and years can look like. I uh, wish you well as someone who um, really understands the pressure uh, and understands the anxiety because I'm going through it myself. But I'd encourage you to look towards Jesus Christ, to know that he spoke a lot about money and to know that he promises a life in him where his uh, yoke is easy and his burden is light. And so I'm sure we can bring these conversations together such that by the end of this, we are a community that has grown in our, our capacity to love each other and to be wise financially. So let's trust God and let's move towards each other with this particular um, conversation. Cheers.